Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to Book Trek 2021. This is an ongoing five month mission, which myself and a bunch of other BookTubers are reading Star Trek. <laughs> and we're going franchise by franchise. So in August, we're reading novels associated with Star Trek, the original series, whether it's the original novels before the lawyers got involved, or the numbered novels in sequence that went on for years, or the novels that are set in the, in the later world of the movies, or the animated series. Anything that fits the bill, anything that has the original crew before they get old, break up, and die. <laughs> uh, and I've been going through a whole bunch of these uh, according to a metric of my own. I have read an enormous amount of Star Trek in my life, and I've developed favorites, including some books that hit the sweet spot so well that I go back to them over and over again. And I'm not doing that for Book Trek 2021. Instead, I'm going back to books that I've only read the one time, or that I read quickly, uh, that I scanned for certain little items, but otherwise haven't really paid attention to. Uh, and it's been working out. It's been working out really well. I've, I've really enjoyed finding nuances, new stuff, ways to enjoy in a much better way books that I read years ago and just forgot. And that's definitely true today. Oh my, this is one of the best tre book trek reading experiences that I've had so far. I find it hard to believe this will continue with the next generation. <laughs> but for the original series, which is my Star Trek... Yeah, very much so. And this is by Barbara Hambly. It's Star Trek vo uh, not, volume number 71, although you don't need to read these things in order. And this one's called Crossroad. There is... I'm, I'm dealing with a little lighting here. I'm still filming in the in the little book room. Uh, I set a, a new setup here that I thought I'd see what it looks like, give you a better look, a better background to look at. Uh, contrary to my predictions, my, my pessimistic gloomy gust predictions, a cold front did come through. A weak cold front, but still, a cold front did come through last night here in Boston. Uh, so, and the air this morning on our, Frida and I went out for a walk, and it, the first thing this morning, and the air felt completely different. It felt breathable. It didn't feel like you were breathing, like you were sucking air through a thick shag carpet. It felt sharp and clear. And the day has progressed, uh, and the once for the last five or six days once the sun cleared the ridge behind this house cleared the trees and the ridge and was actually beating down on the house every room that wasn't air conditioned became uninhabitable almost immediately within 15 minutes and that hasn't happened today so it could it could be that the height of the height the high temperature today is supposed to be 80 degrees fahrenheit uh which is 17 degrees lower than the high, te high temperature yesterday i got a little pessimistic because it gets to you after a while when when for Frida's sake for my dog's sake when we're cooped up in this little room in air conditioning not really able to do much you go out you walk around for 10 minutes instead of an hour and 10 minutes you're both brutally exhausted and her feet hurt and then you come back in here and you it not a question of settling down and doing work you have to just insensately recover for 30 minutes 60 minutes 90 minutes you're just paralyzed for that time as your body recovers from being out in weather like that. After a, days and days and days of doing that, it gets a little bit. It wears on even me, and I, there's no weather that's hot enough for me. And today, it looks like that will be different. And if that's true, then maybe the forecast for the rest of the week, the forecast for the rest of the week show a couple of days where the temperature will be in the mid-80s Fahrenheit as a daytime high, not as a nighttime temperature. And the, the rest of the time, it will be normal summer weather for mid-August. That would be great. I would very much like that. So I'm happy to I'm happy to eat crow. I was wrong about that part of my prediction. I was right that the whole of this change, the whole of this massive system swap out did not result in any moisture for moisture starved Boston. Not at all. Not a single drop of rain. Uh, there's a forecast way down the line at the end of this coming week for a little rain. But I have learned, as I mentioned on this channel, if the forecast percentages are anything less than 100%, then the chance is zero. You just have to read these reports correctly. They are, they are, I won't say lying to you, but they are ginning up data that practical experience tells you otherwise. If the forecast percentages for rain on, let's say, next Thursday are 100%, then you can read that as there being about a 30% chance. If the percent chance listed is anything less than 100%, it will not rain. You can, you can plan your wedding for that day outside because it will not rain there's absolutely no chance that it will and the 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 long range forecast for thursday and friday so show rain and the percentages are around 30 percent each day that will not happen so in other words another whole week for boston without any rain without any uh, water 
Uh, but anyway, uh, even though I'm not technically constrained to this little book room anymore, I do kind of like filming with all of my best friends in the background. I, I kind of like that. So uh, anyway, that's the background for, uh, for Book Trek 2021, for Sanctuary, uh, for Crossroads, rather. And Crossroads takes place... Uh, towards the end of the first five-year mission of the original Enterprise, NCC-1701. No bloody A, B, C, or D. <laughs> Jim Kirk in command. Our, new, our usual crew, uh, Hamley introduces a whole bunch of other crew members on board the Enterprise, names a few of them, including one young lieutenant uh, that Kirk is clearly thinking, Kirk is, is clearly feeling old enough and seasoned enough to start taking this, this lieutenant on as a kind of protege. Um, time, in other words, the thing that we've been talking about in Star Trek fiction has passed a little. This is, this book is set in a period of the adventures of the original five-year mission of the Starship Enterprise that we didn't actually see on television. Uh, and the, they are approaching, uh, Crossroads Nebula, uh, uh, the Crossroads Nebula, a horribly dangerous place that is a standing warning for all starships not to go near it much less in it when a ship emerges that looks like a federation ship only it, it has none of the signals none of the names none of the id codes that any federation ship has ever had uh, and a, a ragtag little crew just a handful of people are beamed over from that ship uh and they're a weird crew <laughs> a green-haired man a klingon woman a vulcan boy uh, they are being very intentionally cagey about where they come from, about who they are. They're telling some fairly obvious lies about being free traders, that sort of thing. And Kirk, to his credit, to his crew, to their credit, they don't believe any of that stuff. Yet, despite all their caution, that little group is able to break out of the brig and take over the Enterprise. Uh, and it locks our crew in with them in a struggle not only to find out what's going on and who they really are but also to retake the enterprise and hanley is fantastic she does a great job here every character is in character and uh, in a rarity for star trek fiction all the invented characters are every bit as interesting as the the crew that we know and love the people that were coming to these books to read from i attribute this i know this is going to seem a little anticlimactic but i attribute this just to hanley being a better writer than most of star trek writers that 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 uh, write these kinds of books any of you who've read her her great vampire novel, Those Who Hunt by Night, will will already know what she can do. And she's done a bunch of others. She's done a bunch of Star Trek novels. We'll be getting to some of them in August before we run out of time. August is already halfway over. I've only talked about a fraction of the stuff I want to talk about. Uh, she's just better than a lot of the other people that that we'll be talking about. This is this rereading this was a tremendously enjoyable experience. The characters are not out of character. The extra, the new characters are all genuinely interesting. And you want to know who these people are and why they seem to know so much that they shouldn't know. Okay, yes, right away it's obvious that they're not free traders of any kind. They're not smugglers of any kind. But they also seem to know a lot about Starfleet technology that, that they shouldn't know under any circumstance, no matter who they are. They don't have any service records. And the answers are fascinating. I'm not going to spoil them here. The answers are a familiar gimmick in Star Trek fiction, both on screen and in books. Uh involving alternate timelines and alternate realities it's a, a well-worn gimmick in star trek but no none the more the less compelling for that in the hands of a good author and hamley also introduces a creepy creepy alien species called the yagorts that that are they're not humanoid in any way they're monsters they're what we consider to be monsters and they take over derelict starships and eat people. <laughs> they eat crew members that are... That, they seem like the stuff of nightmares, but they are real. Spock has a harrowing encounter with one towards the end of this book. And we learn a lot about them. They aren't... They are introduced as simple bogeymen, as monsters that live... that lurk in the dark shadows at the end of that abandoned corridor in any starship. Uh, but Hamley fleshes them out, believe it or not. Like she does with everybody else in this book, she fleshes them out. And perhaps the biggest uh, surprise along those lines is Nurse Christine Chapel. Uh, who starts off the first half of the book. She's just another member of the crew dealing with all of these strange and dangerous things that are happening on board the Enterprise and on board that derelict starship, you know, just off the bow. But eventually her prominence grows and she has a... Hamley gives her a wonderful coda in this book. Just a, 
in the last 40 or 50 pages of the book, Christi a large number of those pages belong to Christine Chapel because of how much you enjoy reading about her, how much you care about her. Some of that, Frida, cut it out, baby. The slurping continues. She will not stop slurping, no matter where she is. <laughs> we learn quite a bit from these renegades that are attacking the Enterprise uh, about our characters. And there's quite a bit about Christine Chapel. Whether or not it turns out to end up being true is up to the reader. Uh, but that shades Frida. Frida, you have to stop doing that, baby. You're bouncing the whole bed. Uh, she wants to go outside, I think, and we'll go outside as soon as I finish this video. Uh, but really, it's a personality profile. The, the coda that Christine Chapel gets at the end of this is delightful. Just delightful. Uh, uh, further proof of what Star Trek fiction is best at showing, which is how much we still have to write about these characters. There's so much more. There's so many more stories to tell about them than, than what you think. When a Star Trek novel... Uh, starts with just a television-style adventure or monster of the week and doesn't do anything more than that, then you know you've read a bad Star Trek novel. It's not that the, the, the material itself is impoverished. It's that the writer didn't see anything anywhere beyond just the basics of what they had to do to fulfill a contract. Barbara Hamley's a perfect... This is a perfect example of an author that decided to tell an invigorating science fiction story anyway, <laughs> even though getting the, getting the gig to write a Star Trek novel means... For the, the suits and the lawyers at Paramount, it means just turning in a certain amount of words by a certain amount of time and having the people who hold who hold command of the series Bible vet it as being okay. There's nothing wrong here, so you, you, we can run it and it seems clean. This is so much more than that. I'm so happy that I revisited it for Book Trek 2021, and I'm hoping that it happens again tonight. I, I am uh, The pattern that I'm using with these Book Trek uh, videos is... Do my day's work, do my day's writing, do my day's reading, and then, you know, there comes a time when I retire into the here, into the little book room. That has been 24 hours a day during this monstrous heat wave, but that, the heat wave does appear to be over. So there'll be a whole bunch of rooms that Frida and I will be back in again. But the, the pattern that I followed is that I, uh, I don't plan ahead of time. I, I, I get to that point, and then all of a sudden I'm looking at the night's reading time, a huge amount of time, and I pick a Star Trek book. Almost at random. I just flip through. I have all a ton of Star Trek ebooks. I just flip through them all, find one, and settle on it. And I intentionally pull away from inclination. So if I'm flipping through those Star Trek books and I'm saying, ah, I didn't like that, then maybe I remember, no, you didn't like that in 1989. <laughs> you might like it now. So let's make that one. Let's let go at it with a completely open mind and let's make that one the Star Trek book for tonight. Hoping that happens tonight. Definitely hoping I have another winner to talk to you about tomorrow. Uh, but I'm going to wrap this up. That is that is your book track video for today. Uh, and I'll leave the hashtag uh, book track 2021. If you type that hashtag into, into YouTube, you'll find all the videos. It's certainly more time effective than me leaving links to all of the videos that my co-hosts have been making. Good Lord, they've been pumping them out at such enormous rate. <laughs> so you just use the hashtag you're going to get a lot of videos by me but you'll get some by other people as well and we'll move on we'll be talking about star trek tomorrow <laughs> so i will see you then thank you book two <laughs>